Valley Talk on News Talk 1580 KGAL. And a very good day to you. I'm Dave Adams. This is Valley Talk. A little damp outside, but you know what? That's what makes it so green and lush and beautiful here in the Willamette Valley. That's why we call it liquid sunshine in this part of the state. And coming from the other side of the state where it's uh, brown, er, uh, it's nice to have some green vegetation here. And so uh, I guess we could count the rain as a blessing. Now, I know it's nice to have the sunshine, but, you know... It's nice to live in a place as green and as lush and as beautiful as we do here in the mid Willamette Valley. Thank you for being with us. This is Valley Talk, and we have uh, three parts in the show today. We've been doing that for the last few days. Try to keep things uh, moving along and keep things changed up a bit. Maria Delapore is in the uh, studios with us today and the superintendent of the Albany School District. Maria, thank you for being with us today. Oh, excuse me. I, we were so busy talking before the show that I need to get the microphone in front of you. There you go. Thank, Thank you, you for inviting much. me. <laughs> we're going to talk about a number of issues with Maria. Bobby Birch is going to be the second half of the show, and she's in charge of the Lebanon Christmas Parade. That's going to be happening this uh, weekend, and uh, King Al's going to have an entry in that. Looking forward to that. We're going to be handing out candy to the, to the young and the young at heart. I'm going to be doing that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Always nice to give candy to people. Yes, kids, make sure you brush your teeth afterwards. <laughs> and Wyatt King called yesterday, wants to be on Valley Talk. He's with the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Sandy Am. And there is a promotion out there. It's a Christmas tree donation, and somebody's going to be having Christmas trees. And if you buy a Christmas tree for uh, $20 or $25, we'll find out the exact number from Wyatt. They'll give all the money to Boys and Girls Club, and you get a Christmas tree. What a deal is that? So... That's coming up in the last half of the show. Stay right here on Valley Talk. We do want to make a, um, what do we want to call this, correction? We want to call this a uh, clarification, I think is a probably a better word, of a story that we just had on KGAL here in just a moment. Mark read it on the news about a, a student at the school pointing a gun at another student. We heard a little bit of the story, and the story said that there was one South Albany student that pointed the gun at another South Albany student, and you, Maria, you're telling me that that the one that pointed the gun was not a student. That, that, that's my understanding. Is uh, what I caught of the bar- broadcast now, w- just now, was that they listed the student with the gun as a South Albany student, and he's not a South Albany student. Uh, he um, hasn't been attending that school um, at all, as far as I know. The student that he had the confrontation with, yes was a South Albany student, so I, I'm not sure if I heard it correctly or um, the, that information was miscommunicated. Okay, so we wanted to, we were busy talking and then we heard that story in the background, so we wanted to make sure that the actual information is put out there. So, Maria, thank you for that uh, clarification. Thank you. One of the things, now, I've graduated in 1978. Let's talk about that while we're talking about guns at schools and so on and so forth. It's a whole different ball game now than when I was in school. I graduated in 78, more than 30 years ago. And uh, back in the day, kids were worried about getting beat up on the way home from school. Now they're worried about getting shot. Uh, A whole different... uh, It's just a whole different culture out there. It's in some school districts, not necessarily Albany, Mm -hmm. but as you look at some other school districts across the United States, maybe some of the inner city schools and so on and so forth, it's it's pretty dangerous out there, isn't it? It can be, certainly, yes. And and we really want one of our number one priorities is to make sh- sure that students are safe, whether that's physically or emotionally, when they come to school. And we uh, we keep a really close eye on all of our students to see if they're struggling with issues or need uh, need some help that maybe get them back on the right track. Do you think? Uh, this is just, I'm just throwing this out there to see your personal opinion on this. Do you think the video games that kids are playing are making uh, um, making them more prone to kind of violent behavior? I think they do, but I'm just wondering what you think. You know, I, I don't know that I have an opinion on that. I haven't, I haven't read any research on that. I think guns are more available in, uh, in our country than maybe in some other countries. Um, but uh, Safety around guns is important for however you use them. There's nothing wrong with guns. It's the problem is with who has a hold of them mm-hmm. and how that they're used. And I know in some of the rural school districts in Oregon, I don't know what the policy is here in Albany, but in places like, oh, let's say Burns or uh, where <coughs> kids live on the ranch and mm-hmm. they grow up with a gun, you know, with a rifle, they went shooting all the time. Yeah. A lot of, kind of times uh, in some of the more rural school districts, kids would have guns in their gun racket 
in, uh, in their pickup. Right. That's just part of culture. That's mm-hmm. part of what they lived at, grew up with. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they don't do that in Portland. But it um, creates a different situation for even those school districts where they have to have a zero tolerance policy. What is the policy in the Albany school districts as far as firearms? Do zero tolerance? Yes, we have zero tolerance for um, firearms or, in, or weapons of any kind in our district, and, and that's pretty much an automatic expulsion from school up for up to a year. Um, there isn't a need for students in our community to be having uh, rifles in the back of their pickups. Um, mm-hmm. No you know, deer walking down the streets. No here. deer, and uh, you know, I know that. Um, some students used to um, have those in their cars for shooting nutria on the way home from right. school, but uh, we don't we don't have that problem here in Albany. So there's no need for students to have weapons on campus. Can they have a pocket knife? Um, no, not really. There's a, a size of a, of a blade that is considered a dangerous weapon, and that's. Um, but no, they should not have any kind of pocket knife at all. Leatherman. Nope. No, they can't do that. Nope. Okay. <laughs> There's All no right. need for those to be on school grounds. Okay, I understand that. <laughs> one of the, what are the reason I wanted to bring you on to, to talk about um, Albany School District, we're going to be talking about finances, and we'll be talking more about that in just a moment. But the charter school proposal, uh, the Albany School Board unanimously voting Monday to deny an application to open a charter school next fall. Uh, saying finance is the biggest reason why. First of all, for those that may not have been following this story closely, what is being proposed here as a charter school? What is, what is a charter school, first of all? Well, a charter school is uh, a, actually a school that that the school district sponsors. So it becomes one of our schools if they were to agree to it, just like any of our other schools are. And and while we don't have, the school board doesn't have the oversight of how it's run, uh, all of its test scores, all of its um, um, students potentially are part of the Albany School District. And it's basically run by um, a board that they select and uh, they make the decisions about curriculum and hiring and firing of staff and um, all of those things. So there's not oversight by the school board uh, that, that serves on the Albany School Board. So they have more autonomy. They, they do. have more local control of they their do. schools, mm-hmm. which I think a lot of parents are wanting to see. We'll talk about why that is in a minute. One of the reasons that I I know, for example, in the Bend, Oregon area, they look at charter schools because for certain talented and gifted students, if they want to do engineering or so on and so forth, they're allowed in these charter schools to more define the curriculum targeted to more of those uh, T and G or talented and gifted students. Mm -hmm. Um, What about that as, as a reason for a charter school? Well, you know, I think there are lots of reasons for charter schools. Um, That certainly would be one. Uh, Innovative curriculum, innovative programs is one of the criteria for making a decision about whether to sponsor a charter school. The other thing that we have is that we are held to state standards and now federal standards with the Common Core standards. And so our expectations for what students need to be able to to do and learn when they graduate from high school is is pretty proscriptive and students cannot get a diploma unless they pass the state the state assessment tests and so um, one of the concerns was that uh, whether or not these students would be as well prepared when they graduated or when they went on to the next grade as the as the requirements in the in the regular public schools Um, we uh, we try to meet the needs of talented and gifted students Uh, a lot of that is done um, at the secondary, the middle and high school, through levels of classes where it's more advanced coursework, whether it's uh, advanced placement or higher levels of math or those kinds of things. At the elementary, it is more of a challenge because you've got classes of 30 in your elementary classrooms and trying to um, differentiate instruction and opportunities for all levels of kids um, is a challenge for, for teachers. Hey, you, you mentioned financial stability is one of the biggest reasons why the, the, you've, uh, the school board, anyway, has decided right. not to authorize a charter school for next mm-hmm. fall. Can you uh, tell us why that is? What was the concern there? Sure. Well, we receive um, state school fund money from, uh, from the state based on the number of students that we have enrolled. And then uh, from that, 80% of that 
those dollars would flow to the charter school. But if your enrollment drops, your funding drops. And so <coughs> it, it becomes uh, critical to budget according to how much money you believe you're going to have based on the number of students. And it looked to the board that their budget was based on a maximum capacity of students that they were hoping to uh, attract and retain. And if if those numbers dropped, if the students decided to leave, then their funding drops, which then made their budget kind of precarious as far as how tightly it was um, designated. So going forward, where are we in this particular charter school proposal? It looks like uh, there was one statement from Jennifer Cummins. By the way, we did have been trying to get a hold of Jennifer Cummins on the phone here for the last two and a half days. And Dennis uh, Prager on Smart Talk 1580. Okay. And uh, something, Murray can't hear that, but uh, something came up on the automation system and played on the air. I was, <laughs> so we paused for a moment for that little station promo. Here we are back again at Valley Talk Live. So Jennifer Cummins, with there's an, uh, we've had her on the show here before, and we want to bring her back and talk about this uh, here on Valley Talk. So looking forward to getting her back and getting their position on this. So I'm not wanting to put words in her mouth and wish she was here on the program to, to say what their next step is. But she was quoted in the Albany Democrat Herald as saying, essentially, we're not done. They're going to continue looking at this proposal. So what is their next step as far as you know? Um, I, th I, I think then what she has said is that the next step is to approach um, either the community college or or a, or a, a college level to see if they were would sponsor it. The, I think her other option would be to try to revise the application uh, in order to meet the interests of the district and reapply. Uh, my understanding there's also a process that you can do mediation through the state to try and come to some kind of term. So I'm not sure what their next steps are, um, but um, I think there are a variety of options. As we looked at some of the comments online regards to this most recent decision by the Albany School Board, one of them comments essentially says that school boards, and again, I want to stress here that uh, as far as the radio station or my personal opinion, we have not formed a, a, a position on this. We're just bringing the issues out there and talking about it and saying this is what the critics are saying. This is what's being said. What's the response? And there are some people that feel that school districts, school boards are more concerned about keeping the teachers union happy than, than quality education for the students. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, an accusatory statement. That's mm -hmm. just a statement that's been put out there. And so if we could respond to that, what's your response? And, and that one kind of surprised me because I don't know um, that, that this makes them happy or unhappy. I think they uh, want to see all teachers paid in an adequate salary at a living wage as well as educational assistance. And certainly charter schools pay far less than most public schools do. Um, I think they're more concerned about um, equity for all of our 9,000 students that, that um, for the district to sponsor a charter school that seems like um, a more select kind of setting and uh, at the expense of other students and class sizes going up potentially uh, to sponsor this. Uh, they saw that as an equity issue more for students, um, as well as making sure that people going into the teaching profession are, are um, you know, treated fairly. Is it, would this be the first charter school in the Albany School District? It would have been. We had an application maybe 10 years ago or so, uh, uh, and there were some of the same issues about financial stability, not having a facility. Um, that one was more um, focused on kind of a military-type approach, as I recall, but it's been quite a while. Let's talk about budgets. Uh, we talked about that briefly right before the show. Uh, where are we as far as in-state funding of the Albany School mm -hmm. District. We're mm -hmm. expecting some news tomorrow from the state as far as the budget. Right. The governor's budget comes out tomorrow, and, and that's a proposal that he makes uh, to the legislature, as I understand, and then they have the opportunity to, to make adjustments to that. Um, you know, we made some fairly severe reductions over the last few years, uh, closing schools, cutting staff, 
and closing programs and and um, have been able to kind of stabilize our program. Last year, we actually added back a few teaching positions, which was 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 nice. So, I think when I'm hearing at the level of the, the of the state funding that we should be okay um, as far as maintaining what we have now, but would certainly would not be um, restoring where we were uh, a few years ago, four or five years ago. Where are we broad stroke overall uh, as far as student numbers and quality of education, as far as funding? Are we and I don't want to use the term, is there fat in the budget? I'm not going to come out and ask that question. <laughs> but what I am going to ask is, what over, do you feel comfortable with the funding level and the quality of education as far as number of students per classroom and so on and so forth? Or are we right at the edge where we're pushing it a little bit? That's kind of a broad, generalized question, but... No, I am absolutely not comfortable with the level of funding for schools in the state of Oregon or the size of our classes. Uh, I think that we're woefully underfunded, um, and I know that there are lots of other needs in the state. Um, our, our funding comes directly from income tax, and so when people, when the economy takes a downturn and people are not employed, the funding is goes down and and so it's it's a bit of a roller coaster from us from year to year um, but I, I think education is uh, way underfunded uh, as compared to other states in this country when we say underfunded what are we talking about are we talking about teacher salaries are we talking about school supplies or is it just everything is not getting enough money is there any particular area that's really mm -hmm. suffering well, our, our biggest expense and our biggest asset are our people, and 89% of our budget goes to employee costs. Uh, we employ over 1,000 people, and uh, that's, that's a pretty good size organization. And um, when, when you have too many students and not enough adults, um, it's tough for each student to get the attention that they need. Uh, we have cut um, in other areas, um, but things like supply budgets or um, uh, insurance or electricity, you can only cut so much there. And really the only way we got through this last downturn it was working with our uh, employee groups to take a reduction in their compensation. And they took that by step freezes, they took that by uh, furlough days, and um, they really helped us f to the tune of several million dollars to be able to get through this last financial crisis. What's the st class size of a typical class <coughs> in the Albany School mm -hmm. District? How many students mm -hmm. per teacher? Um, I, th I would say our mm, kindergarten, first, second grade are probably 28. Um, third through fifth, probably you know, right around 30. Middle and high schools, 30, 35, some up to 40, just depending on the class. 35 to 40 students per teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, too high? Oh, yes. Okay. Why is that? And that's every period. And so if you're a high school teacher who teaches six or seven periods a day, that's a whole lot of students <laughs> that you have to prepare for and grade papers for and monitor their progress. And it's just um, the teachers students, are... students lose individual instruction and if they need help, they just mm -hmm. can't get it because they're lost in the crowd. It's harder. It's harder. You know, our teachers work really hard to make sure that doesn't happen. But, but when you put that many students in the classroom, it's, it's definitely harder to meet their needs. We've really uh, helped uh, that situation by relying on well-trained educational assistants who do small reading groups with students and you know, can, can, we can have ways to break down those class sizes into small groups at different times to focus on different curricular areas. I guess a personal experience here. I was in a classroom, and I was, this was way back when, in the 70s, uh, in Idaho. And in high school, we had a math class that had 90 students in it. Oh, my. <laughs> and there was uh, the class that it didn't work, especially for me. But... Uh, they, you had four or five teachers in that class, but mm -hmm. you had 90 students mm -hmm. that were constantly rotating through testing and studying right. and teaching and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And at, speaking as the student, it was extremely easy to get lost in the crowd. Mm -hmm. There was just not enough teachers to go around to answer any questions, especially. This was an algebra class, and mm -hmm. I had difficulty in algebra. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got D's all the way through it. I just didn't get the help I needed. Mm -hmm. The uh, class sizes like that, uh, that's a real problem, isn't it? 
Certainly, I, you know, we want to make sure that students um, understand the material before they go on to the next class. Uh, we've gone to something called proficiency grading, where um, students are taught to the particular standards in like Algebra 1 and then they're assessed whether or not they understand that concept before moving on and so we break it down a little bit more to make sure that they're on track on a more regular basis rather than waiting till the end of the semester and just handing them a letter grade. Talking to Maria Delapore, superintendent of the Albany School District. We need to take a break. We'll be right back on Valley Talk. We do want to remind you to uh, make sure I didn't mention it the first part of the show, but to sign up for Quiznos Taste on Us. We are giving away a $10 gift certificate for Quiznos in Albany. That's right next to Novak's Restaurant and next to the G.I. Joe's, uh, former G.I. Joe's Sporting Goods location. End of the show, we're going to draw a name out of the hat. If it's your name, you'll get a $10 certificate for anything at Quiznos in Albany. Sub sandwiches, chips, drink, take your buddy and have lunch on us. It's Taste on Us. Send me an email, dave at kgal.com, or call the station at 926-KGAL or 451-KGAL. It's Quiznos. Taste on Us. Thanks to Dale and the crew for being a part of Valley Talk here on KGAL. Back in a moment. Thomas Jefferson once said, never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. So get organized now by calling Queen Bee Organizing in Corvallis. Kristen Bertelson of Queen Bee Organizing knows that less clutter equals less stress. Many people struggle with multiple levels of disorganization of their homes and workplaces and often need outside help to put their lives in order. If you're distracted and overwhelmed for the holidays and you need to get organized, then call Queen Bee Organizing now, 541-231-6964. Or log on to queenbeeorganizing.com. That's Queen, the letter B, organizing. This Medicare season, come home to Samaritan Advantage Health Plan, where you're always welcome and never a stranger. Home is all about you and your needs, and that's how our members feel when they join Samaritan Advantage. For example, our members know we take our commitment to their care seriously because we take the time to listen to their concerns, either on the phone or in our Corvallis office, and they know we know local health care best. After all, we live here too. Now's the time to get the quality care and treatment you deserve during Medicare's open enrollment. Learn more by calling Samaritan Advantage in Corvallis at 1-800-832-4580. It's not too late to discover how you can get affordable health care from Samaritan Advantage, just as your friends and neighbors have. Don't wait another year. Come home to a better health plan. Give us a call at 1-800-832-4580. Colorful, delightful, and oh-so-fun. That's Lebanon's 12th Annual Holidays in the Park. Take the whole family this Saturday to Ralston Park. Between 3 and 7, enjoy horse and carriage rides, holiday music, Loki rides, face painting, and a look inside Santa's house. Fill up on plenty of yummy holiday treats. Then watch a Twilight Parade at 515 featuring thousands of twinkling lights and the new Miss Oregon as Grand Marshal. In Lebanon's historic downtown, the 12th Annual Holidays in the Park, Saturday. A presentation of Partners for Progress. Come on, ladies, join us at Garland Nursery. Come on, ladies, treat yourself to some holiday therapy at Garland Nursery. That's right, it's back by popular demand. Ladies Day Out, this Saturday from 10 until 4. Shop, play, and pamper yourself all day for a great cause. 10% of all sales, except wine and food, will go towards Contours, a local North Albany breast cancer program. Garland Nursery's Ladies Day Out will include a greens arranging workshop, a scarf time demo, lunch by Ayavino's Catering, wine by the glass, a bog's trunk show, and a demo on container gardening in terrariums. Grab your girlfriends and head to Garland Nursery. Treat yourself to delights, tasty treats, wine, designing your own holiday centerpiece, and all for a good cause. It's the perfect ladies' day out at Garland Nursery this Saturday from 10 until 4. Garland Nursery is located halfway between Corvallis and Albany on Highway 20. Less hype, just quality news, sports, and Dennis Smart Prager Talk on from Smart your Talk friends at 1580 KGAL. There we go. Hey, this is Valley Talk. I'm Dave. Uh, don't forget to sign up for Quiznos Taste on Us. Dave at KGAL.com is the email to send it to. Make sure you put Taste on Us on the subject line, and we'd love to draw your name out for the prize. Or call the station at 926-KGAL or 451-KGAL. In the studio, we're pleased to have Maria Delapar, who is the... Um, uh, Della Poor, who is the superintendent of the Albany School District. One of the things that we wanted to talk about was administrators' salaries. And in just looking at comments online, one of the, and this is something I've heard on the street as well from people, complaining that 
administrative salaries and uh, clerical salaries, but specifically administrative salaries, uh, that money could be better be used in the classroom teaching students. What What's your response to that? That's kind of a pointed question at you since you're an administrator, but uh, <laughs> well, it's not it's, meant to be. It's not the first time I've heard that. Okay. <laughs> and th that what's was, your response? That was part of the discussion we had when we were making our budget cuts, and and we have taken reductions in administrator, in the number of administrators, um, just like we have in the number of teachers, and then in all employee groups as well. And so, uh, we are not top heavy on administration, and there is a, <coughs> a state. Uh, website that people can go to to see how we compare with how we spend the money that we do get um, as well as how our um, student achievement um, progress compares with the state as well and it's it's called openbooksproject.org it's all one word dot org openbooksproject.org and that's information the state gathers and you can compare from district to district and it, you, what we'll find is we put more of our money into the classroom and we um, um, adjust more less um, finances toward administration because we believe that um, students and teachers in the classroom are the are the best way to make sure that students learn. Total K, according to the Open Books Project website, uh, total K through 12 spending, this is kindergarten through 12th grade, so it's um, kindergarten through high school, not counting uh, Oregon State University and colleges and public community colleges and so on and so forth, just up through high school. Uh, in Oregon, total spending is $5,207,000,000. billion, $207 million. It's five billion dollars. That's a lot of money. Average spending per student, nine thousand two hundred seventy-six dollars, and that would be annually. That was these numbers are for 2010, 2011 uh, school year. Uh, Five billion dollars. That's a lot of money. Yeah, this is a lot of money. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we used to get more than five billion, um, and um, you know the. The education, K through 12 education, and all th and up through community college and college takes uh, a substantial portion of the state revenue. Uh, the uh, the portion that w the other two areas are public safety and uh, and health and uh, human services, and those are also very important. The the percentage that that education uh, has received in the last year, few years has gone down, so we're getting less of the percentage of the total pie. Uh, we figure that the amount of money we get from state uh, revenue is about $6,000 per student, so I'm suspecting that that dollar figure includes some of the federal money we get for students with special needs. Um, that that probably is on top of that. What do you think you're going to hear from the state tomorrow as far as funding for the next biennium? Well, uh, we have um, some new leadership in, o in Oregon with Dr. Rita Crew and uh, our governor are wanting to target some of the funding toward um, investment areas that they believe will get a bigger return on student learning. And so we've heard a little bit about that. We're not sure if that funding will be set aside out of the state school fund um, or whether it will be, there's a formula for how we get funded based on the, the number of students and what category students fall in. So I'm suspecting that we'll hear from the governor some of the areas that uh, he believes are specifically going to be targeted that have a good return on the investment around student achievement. Now, some fairly significant restructuring in the uh, the school, the um, Department of Education on the state level, isn't there, as right. far as having the governor more in charge directly over what's going mm -hmm. on with education? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> overview that for me, and then how do, you, do you, how do you feel about that? Do you feel that's a good move from the we state? We do. I, um, one of the um, one of the pluses for us is that we have Rob Saxton, who's the, in charge of the um, Oregon Department of Education now, who is a former Albany administrator, and uh, we have a good connection with him and believe in his ability to send us in the right direction. He's been a, a superintendent uh, himself and understand Tiger to Walleton and understands the complexity of how schools are run and the and the core mission of, of what we should be doing. So we're excited about the direction that, that schools are going in or the state is going in around education. Um, we have these uh, new achievement compacts which are the accountability plan that replaced No Child Left Behind, that we're, we're all targeting the same goals and working in the same direction. And, and so I think, uh, I think we're on the right track. Do you think we're competitive worldwide? 
I think we are competitive worldwide when you compare what what students are we measuring. You know, we measure and assess all of our students. Um, and in some countries, the students that are assessed are, are a very select group. So you're comparing apples and oranges, in my opinion. We're over here in the United States, we're taking a better look at the overall picture right. than specific yeah. students. We take, you know, we take all comers, <laughs> regardless of their level or, the, or their need. Um, and, you know, our, if you look at our scores on, on this website, you'll see that our graduation rate is higher than the state. A lot of our test scores are higher than the state. Um, you know, we're, we're doing pretty well. Okay. I'm going to throw you a question here I just thought of. <laughs> Let's say, and we haven't rehearsed this, folks, so we'll see what happens. Let's say, Maria, we make you the superintendent of public construction in the state of Oregon. Here's, here's your task. Go for it. <laughs> what would you do in the state to increase the quality of education, increase you know, the fiscal responsibility, so on and so forth? Here's a blank check. You're now in charge. What would you do? Well, I th the most critical part to me of quality education is the, is the effectiveness of the teacher in the classroom, and so I think we need to invest in teachers in their in their teacher preparation program. Uh, we need to recruit and retain highly qualified teachers to be working with our students. Um, we need to ga engage parents in supporting what uh, students are learning in the classroom and. Um, and the community as a whole. We have a fabulous community that steps up when we are in need and provides, if not m not money, then at least opportunities and, and time and expertise so that we can continue to offer what we can for students. So if, if I had a blank check, I'd, uh, I'd, in I'd increase the amount of money going to schools to be able to provide as many opportunities for students as possible um, so they, they get a full comprehensive program. Um, I would invest in making sure that we had really top quality teachers. We have teachers who leave the profession because they can make a lot more money in private industry. And, it, and that, to me, is a shame. Is there any way we could be more fiscally responsible? If we could, I'd like Remember, to you're know in charge. how. <laughs> we really went through the budget uh, with a fine-tooth comb about three years ago and made some pretty drastic reductions in closing some wonderful small elementary schools that... Um, you know, it was a shame to have to do that. But uh, if there's any um, uh, uh, money that's not being spent wisely, I sure have not found it. And uh, we have spent a considerable amount of time uh, looking at the budget, taking it out to community groups, uh, asking for input, and uh, always happy to, to have other ideas. People, if people in the school district want to contact you, Maria, how do they do that? Um, probably by going to our website. Our website is a wealth of information, and there's a contact us button on the website, and they can con they can look up information about the district. Um, we have our our newsletters posted there, uh, recent stories about what's happening in schools, as well as web pages for each of our schools. So I would encourage people to go to the to the website and. If they have questions or suggestions, I'd be happy to hear them. Okay, Maria Delapore, the superintendent of the Albany School District. I know you're busy. Thank you for talking to us today about charter schools and kind of an overall look at education and funding especially. Thank you very much for inviting me. And look forward to having you back on the show in the future. Absolutely. This is Valley Talk, and when we come back, we are going to be talking to Bobby Birch about what's going on with the Lebanon Christmas Parade and Wyatt King has got a, quite a deal out there about how you can get a Christmas tree and the money can go to the Boys and Girls Club, a worthwhile uh, organization. Valley Talk will continue uh, in just a moment. The Osgood File, sponsored in part by 1-800-Flowers.com. Make someone smile today with 1-800-Flowers Smile Guarantee. In a moment, a special offer for you. This is Charles Osgood. At this point, some 23 million Americans take care of their elderly parents. They don't have space in their homes. They're faced with either letting them live alone or moving them to a nursing home. But there's a third alternative, says our CBS News colleague Wyatt Andrews, a portable apartment called a med cottage. The med cottage is basically a three-room Dennis Prager on like Smart Talk 1580. Room. There are safety rails, lighted floorboards, and a wall with a first aid kit and defibrillator machine. More about the med cottage, or granny pod, as some call it, after this. Tis the season for special occasions, from the holidays, of course, to birthdays and anniversaries. And here's a great way to make those occasions even more special. A beautiful bouquet from 1-800-Flowers.com. Send fresh, beautiful flowers to the people you care about, from the folks who care about delivering smiles with every bouquet. Let me tell you about the Rose and Calla Lily Bouquet. 
It's a dozen vibrant red roses paired with six white calla lilies. Just gorgeous. This week, the folks from 1-800-Flowers.com have a special offer since you listen to the Osgood file. Order the rose and calla lily bouquet and get a clear glass vase, all for only $29.99. That's half the regular price. To order this best-selling bouquet, just go to 1-800-Flowers.com, either from your desktop or your mobile device. At the top of the homepage, click on the radio microphone and enter my last name, Osgood. O-S-G-O-O-D. That's 1-800-Flowers.com and enter Osgood. Or you can call 1-800-Flowers and mention Osgood. Viola Baez had made it clear to her family that she never wanted to be put in a nursing home, says Wyatt Andrews. Viola had told everyone for years, no nursing homes, not ever. And her daughter, Socorito Page, got the message. A very clear instruction. Very clear. Very, very clear. <laughs> so last winter, when her mom began to need constant care, Page bought her the med cottage. She put the cottage in the yard, right outside the kitchen window, and built a 20-foot walkway so Viola can come and go at will. It's her space, but it's still with us. It's got three built-in cameras that can be monitored from the house and alert the family if Viola should fall or need attention. Ken Dupin, whose company makes the med cottages, believes he's found an answer for millions of baby boomers. And we feel that this is a very American solution. Not a cheap solution. The one Viola's daughter bought cost $125,000. But Paige figured that a nursing home would cost more than $60,000 a year and take Viola where she didn't want to be. Viola, what do you think? What do you think of this house? Well, as long as I live with my family, it's okay. Says Wyatt Andrews. For millions of other Americans, it's a possible glimpse of the future. The Osgood File. This is Charles Osgood on the CBS Radio Network. Tis the season and time for planning holiday parties and memorable company celebrations. Be sure to include Mama's Fine Italian in your plans. Have the party at Mama's in Lebanon or book them to cater your event. Either way, it will be superb and your guests will love it. Need a special bottle of wine for dinner tonight or for a party hostess gift? No better place or price than Mama's incomparable wine shop. Close Sunday and Monday, so make the most of the other five days and join your friends at Mama's. Like them on Facebook or contact them through their website, mamasfineitalian.com. Call for reservations or to plan your holiday party. 541-451-5050. That's 451-5050. Mama's Fine Italian and Wine Shop on West Oak between Main and 2nd in Lebanon. Across from the big blue Napa Auto Parts building. Farming is fun, especially when you have a tractor like the all-new Kubota Grand L40 from Lynn Benton Tractor. Choose from eight new models, all with Kubota's powerful fuel-efficient diesel engines and a choice of three productive transmissions, including the all-new innovative HST+. See how the Grand L40 can improve your acreage. Check one out at Lynn Benton Tractor's new location on McLean Street in Silverton and, as always, along Highway 99E Tangent. Lynn Benton Tractor. The Car Show, Saturday afternoons on News Talk 1580, KGAL. This is Valley Talk. We're live from our Albany studios. Glad uh, you are with us today. Don't forget to sign up for Quiznos Taste on Us. Dave at kgal.com is where you send the email entry to. Put Quiznos Taste on Us on the subject line or call the station at uh, 926 KGAL or 451 KGAL. On the phone line with us, Bobby Birch. And Bobby, thanks for being with us on Valley Talk. Not a problem. And the Holidays in the Park is coming up this Saturday in Lebanon, and everybody loves a parade. And uh, what you're tasked with is uh, putting on a nice parade in Lebanon. So let's talk about the parade, first of all. When is it, and what can we expect in the parade? It is Saturday. Uh, parade starts at 515. We'll go down Ash Street and go down Main and turn on to Grant and then encircle the park. Um... We've got a little bit of everything. We've got some horses. We've got kids. We've got the strawberrians in their limo. How many entries are in the parade this year? At this point, um, as we speak, I have 16. So you are taking more entrants? Yes, I, I take them the day of the parade. If they show up and they're ready to go, I just throw them in. Is there a per uh, fee to be in the parade? The fee is a can of food for each person with the entry and that will be donated to our local food banks. And this ends up in the tree lighting ceremony, doesn't it? Yes. 
Okay. What time is the tree lighting ceremony? Um, it is tentatively scheduled for 6 o'clock. Uh, a lot depends on if the parade runs past that, but we're shooting for the 6 o'clock time frame. How many years have you been doing the parade in, in Lebanon? Um, this is the second lighted Christmas parade. Um, and I am just starting my 18th year as the Strawberry Grand Parade Chair. I love these, these in, uh, in Idaho, we call them nightlight parades, but uh -huh. uh, where they have the lights and the floats and the Christmas lights and so on and so forth. You hear the hum of the generators as the floats are coming down the street and the twinkling Christmas lights. Uh, yeah. Just tailor-made for uh, Christmas time of the year, aren't they? Oh, yes. And this is one parade that is so easy to put together, and I actually get to see it. So I actually get to enjoy the after effects. Well, that's good. That's great. So yeah. before the parade is the holidays in the park, and that starts at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. There's a whole list of events going on there. What's going to be happening at holidays in the park? It's going to be at Ralston Park starting at 3. Yes. Um, we've got Cascade Performing Arts starting out at three with all the little kids dancing and being cute. Um, as kids do. Yep, yeah, yes, and they are all cute. Um, at 3.40, we've got Eastland Christian Academy performing. And then after that, at 4.15, we have the Lebanon High School Choir. At 4.45, uh, Christmas Band. I'm not sure exactly if that's going to be a high school or some local people. And then at 5.15, we have the parade that goes right past the park. And then at 5.55, approximately after the parade is through, we have the high school choir sing another Christmas song. And then we have the lighting of the tree by the mayor in Miss Oregon. And then the choir will sing another Christmas carol after the, par after the tree lighting. And then we have a band that plays from 6.10 until everybody's gone. A lot of fun at this event, isn't it? A day-long event. Yes. We have um, the 40 and 8 bring the Loki and offer rides through the town on the Loki um, till dark. That starts at 3. Um, we also have carriage rides that uh, I believe Chafin Farms provides the carriages. I'm not 100% on that one. And they provide carriage rides through town. And they are going to be doing that from 3 to 4.30 and then start back up after the parade because they also um, escort Santa through the parade. Is there say, a contact person that people can call if they want to get involved in holidays in the park then they haven't, maybe they've procrastinating as a lot of us do and they've waited till the last minute. Do they call Dela? Yes, Dela Johnson is the main contact person. And how do they do that? Um, they can send her an email trying to find her and it is b johnson at ci.lebanon.or.us or they can call down to the um, police station and leave her a message there and if people want to find out about the parade enter they talk to you how do they contact yes. you um they can contact me either on my cell phone and that is 541-905-0792 or my email, which is xmasbrat, x-m-a-s-b-r-a-t at comcast.net. Xmasbrat? Yeah, my birthday's the day after Christmas. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting email address. Yes. This is the start of the holiday shopping season in Lebanon, correct? Is this the official yes. get ready, set, go? I believe so, yes. All right. Looking forward. In fact, uh, Kegel will have an entry in the parade. I'll be walking along handing out candy. And yes, we do know that we're not supposed to throw the candy. <laughs> we got the memo. Good. And looking forward to being part of the festivities, holiday festivities in Lebanon uh, this Saturday. And All looking right. forward to seeing you and seeing the parade, especially the night yes. light or the, uh, the lights at dusk. Twilight. Twilight parade. Twilight parade. Anything you'd like to add, uh, Bobby? Um, dress warm. Come have fun. Enjoy enjoy the festivities. And prayers and good thoughts for no wind and no rain, correct? Yes. I'm going to do my uh, my sun dance, although it won't be sunny at the time, but it seems to work for the strawberry parade to hold off on the rain. So mm. hopefully we can get it all done before the festivities start. More power to you. Bobby, thank you for being with us. Thank you for all you do for Lebanon and for the uh, the holiday parade. 
Well, thank you for having me. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. This is Valley Talk K Gal, and we'll be back in just a moment talking to Wyatt King and his he got a deal for you and Christmas trees and how you can help the Boys and Girls Club of the Greater Santi Am. Valley Talk continues in just a moment. I'm gonna have a great Christmas, but this year I'll have to really stretch my budget. I'm keeping it simple by shopping at the cutest little jewelry store in the area, Mid Valley Gems and Jewelry. They'll even wrap my gifts for free. Lovely estate items, distinctive designer pieces, always some great sale items, and their prices and quality are always better than the chain stores. For the collectors on your list, 2012 proof sets and silver dollars. Collectible Christmas coins, too. Coin collector supplies and starter kits, stocking stuffers from under $10. Smart shoppers know where to buy fine jewelry and gifts for less now and anytime. So, if you were thinking jewelry is too expensive for your gift list, think again. Let Mid Valley Gems and Jewelry make this Christmas the best ever. Mid Valley Gems and Jewelry on Pacific, just down from Wendy's in Albany. Banking these days can be pretty impersonal. You've got your big banks, your internet banks. Your do-it-yourself banks and your too big to fail Dennis banks. Dennis Prager That's on why you Smart might be Talk 1580. In Willamette Community Bank. I'm Dave Wood, President and CEO of Willamette Community Bank. We believe you deserve better service without sacrificing a thing. So if you're feeling underserved, make the switch to the best banking option out there. Willamette Community Bank, service like no other, we promise. Member FDIC. For the place that has a lot of everything Christian for less. Come to Tree of Life Christian Outlet. It's Kids Weekend this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. For three days only, every kid's Bible, book, CD, DVD, game, and toy will be at least 20% off retail. And hundreds of books, CDs, DVDs, apparel, and gift items are only $4.97. That's right, $4.97. All of Tyndale House Publishers' one-year devotionals for family, teens, and kids are on sale, too. Tyndale House Publishers' one-year book of devotions for boys or girls, only $9.97. One-year book of devotions for kids, only $9.97. Over 50 Adventures in Odyssey titles by Focus on the Family are on sale, too. Kids Weekend Sale also features... Tyndale House Publishers' new living Bibles for kids. We've slashed prices on every single kid's item, so hurry in and stock up on great Christmas gifts for the kids. Three days only, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You don't want to miss this sale. Call 888-33-BIBLE or come see us at Kings Boulevard in Corvallis, Gateway Mall in Springfield, Valley River Center in Eugene, the Columbia Gorge Premium Outlet in Troutdale, or in Seaside or Lincoln City at the Factory Outlet Stores. Tree of Life Christian Outlet. A little out of the way and a lot less to pay. Hi, this is the Up and Up Kid, Mike Mason, inviting you to join me this Friday from 11 till 1 p.m. as K-Show broadcasts live at John and Phil's Subaru Share the Love event. John and Phil's Subaru in Corvallis is the only Subaru dealer in the Mid-Willamette Valley and has great savings on the best-selling cars in America. During their Subaru Share the Love event, you'll find even bigger savings, and I'll have hundreds of dollars in prizes for you to win. So stop in this Friday at John and Phil's Subaru on Highway 99 West at 800 Northwest 5th Street in Corvallis. Into the woods and onto the waters. Listen to Northwestern Outdoors, Saturday nights on Smart Talk 1580. Hey, this is Valley Talk. We're back on the air once again, and we got a treat for you. We're going to have the new community outreach assistant for the uh, Boys and Girls Club of the Greater Sandy Am. She's going to sing us all a Christmas carol, Jen Ford, and she's on the line with us. We've got three people on the line right now. Wyatt King, who's involved in the group, Executive Director Chris Latimer, and uh, Jen Ford, our serenade person of the day for Christmas carols. Jen, thank you for doing that. Thank you all three for being with us on Valley Talk. Let's make sure that we get out there this Christmas tree donation. Wyatt, you called me very excited about this yesterday. Wanted to tell the folks that if you want to get a goodbye on a Christmas tree and have all the money, go to Boys and Girls Club of Greater Sandy Am. How do we do that? Well, basically, you just come by the Boys and Girls Club and you sponsor a child's membership for $20 and you get a free Christmas tree. How, you just stop by the club? Where do you get the tree at? Well, we have lots on both the uh, Lebanon Club and the Sweet Home Club, and we're also having a cut day on Sunday where people can come out to the Sullivan tree lot and pick their own tree, and we'll cut it for them, and there'll be hot cocoa and cookies and music, the whole shebang. Who do we thank for this generous donation? Al and Dixie Sullivan are the generous donors of these trees. They have an absolutely amazing tree farm out on Mount Hope Road, and um, Al called me up, uh, this is Chris, and Al called me up a couple of months ago and said, hey, I have a great idea. Would you like to have some Christmas trees? And could, would that help you raise some money? And so 
um, that's what launched us off into this sponsorship drive this winter. Great. What are the hours, and do they just stop by the club, and what hours can they do that? Um, you can stop by the club and make the donation, or you can do the donation online at bgcgreatersaniam.org. And, and our tree lots here at the club are open all day long, you know, as long as somebody's here in the building. And then we're open into the evening at, at 6 o'clock, until 6 o'clock. So if they make the donation online, do they get a... a something that then they can go to the tree lot and cash it in for the tree right they can just bring in their receipt to the tree lot and we'll look at that receipt and the, and give them a tree if they want to do a hundred dollars then they're going to get they, they can pick five trees if they'd like off the lot they can also do a donation and we can provide them with certificates that they can provide to employ you know employees to neighbors to customers it's really a great idea you know for a business out there i've had several businesses um rick franklin corporation purchased 30 certificates last week to give their employees so their employees can come into the tree lot or they can go up to the tree farm this Sunday and pick a tree live. Uh, so they make great gifts and we can provide nice certificates for that. Great. Hey, the way this, this show ends is we have a uh, theme music that comes up under we're talking so we need to do the Christmas song now, the, the Christmas carol. And I understand Jen Ford, I hope she volunteered for this. Uh, she didn't, actually. <laughs> What's that? It was kind of thrown under the bus. Oh, okay, well. It was kind of a joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, did she want to sing a Christmas carol? No, she doesn't. Oh. <laughs> you got me all excited here. I would break your guys' speakers. <laughs> okay, well, one well, of these days... We're just happy for the opportunity to talk with you and to share information of, about what we're doing. $20, a $20 donation covers one child's membership for a year, and that hooks that child up with more than $500 of critical programs and services that we would provide in the year. So any kid with a membership can come by the club any, any afternoon after school or on non-school days. They get academic support. They get a free, hot, complete meal every day. Um, except weekends and so twenty dollars goes a long way in making a difference for a child and uh, you be twenty dollars doesn't seem like a lot of money to a lot of us but for a lot of folks that is prohibitive to getting a kid into the club so this is just a great opportunity get a beautiful tree and do something for a kid this holiday season jen is uh, the new community outreach assistant jen uh, if you could get on the phone there what do you do and what what's your goal and how what do you bring to the club um, I, yeah, I just started on Monday, actually. I'm really excited about it. So we're just trying to get this out there um, for people to come sponsor a child. And um, one of the other things is they could sponsor a child and they could donate the tree to a family in need if they already got their own Christmas tree. And let's talk about Boys and Girls Club. Overall, what do you do? <laughs> well, the Boys and Girls Club, our vision... It, the tagline we're using right now is that we're investing in Eastland County kids. Um, we're investing in Eastland County by investing in one child at a time. And so we are providing um, after school programs and non school day programs that are focused on academic support, um, citizenship development, life skills development, mentoring, and then also healthy lifestyles. So our you don't see a lot of kids at the Boys and Girls Club sitting around. They're up, they're active, they're in the gym doing activities, they're in mentoring groups, they're in the library studying. And so we're just all about providing a safe, warm place for kids to come and to grow and learn and to be kids. Okay, we got a few more seconds left to go on the show, so we're going to do a chorus of We Wish You a Merry Christmas, just the chorus, okay? Okay. Sounds in good. three, two, one. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Have a great holiday. Uh, enjoy the Christmas. Thank you for being with us today on Valley Talk as we have a whole lot of fun. This is why we call it live radio, folks. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Locally owned and operated, this is the very independent News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis.